few weeks ago on my YouTube channel, I made this video here whereby I made the somewhat controversial claim that I believed that stretching watercolour paper was a bit of a waste of time, preferring to press on with the painting itself than spending time stretching the paper, waiting for it to dry and all that stuff. As you can imagine, there were quite a few comments about this and the way that I had stretched my watercolour paper. I was told that I was doing it the wrong way and that it should be done with this gum tape and using the wet method and not the dry method that I demonstrated in that video. It set me thinking, maybe I was wrong. To make it a fair demonstration, I wanted to show you how to stretch paper, the different method using this gum tape, using a wet method of stretching watercolour paper to see whether or not I was right with my controversial claim or whether I was wrong. Let's find out. I'm using a sheet of A3 sized paper today and this is 100% cotton and it's a rough surface. So I'm going to be attaching it to this watercolour board that I use all the time for my painting and I'm going to be using gummed tape. This is a tape that you need to activate with water in order to stick it to your board. I'm measuring it out to start with to make it easier to attach when the watercolour paper is wet. Because I don't have a bath or a sink nearby, I'm going to be wetting it with water uh, from this little bowl here with my sponge. The idea being that you need to saturate the watercolour paper with water so that you get the buckling and the warping done before you apply your paint. Ideally, you want to be doing it in a large basin or a bath or a tub of some sort. What you would do is you would hold the paper by the tip, pass it through the water just for a sort of a moment or two and then you would hold it upright to drip all the water from the paper so that it's not dripping wet on your watercolour board. So for the purposes of this demonstration I'm just going to be using a natural sponge and you can see I'm literally throwing the water on here to make this a fair comparison to video number one which you will find on the top of your screen right now and I urge you to watch that first of all so that you can see what I'm referring to in this video. So once I've saturated both sides there's a right side and a wrong side to watercolour paper Paper. To be honest with you, I work on both. It doesn't really matter for my purposes. And you can see here how wet that board is. I'm just giving a little wipe there. So because the watercolour paper is now saturated with water, I'm attaching it to the board like this. And you can see that it's obviously going to stick to that smooth surface. The idea being at this stage, I'm going to use my sponge to gently iron out any creases or warping that may occur at this point, which is what I'm expecting. Now you need to be really careful not to over... Um, overwork this because you need to be careful not to go over it too many times with your sponge to iron out your air bubbles. I'm just showing you how wet it is there underneath. By going over it too many times you may damage the sizing of the paper and sizing just means that it uh, refers to the process of treating the paper um, that makes it more kind of receptive to water and pigment. So you don't want to over uh, sort of work it with the sponge. You can see here there's a little bump in the middle and I'm just gently moving it over with that sponge. Like I said, not trying to overwork it because I don't want to damage the sizing on the paper, which may make the um, application of the watercolour a little bit uh, a little bit different. So once again, I'm showing you what's underneath. Um, I just wanted to prove to you that it was soaking wet because I don't want you to think that I'm doing it the same way as the last time. So I want you to show you soaking wet paper and you can see already those little bumps um, that are appearing there, which is part of the warping process. So you may ask, what's the, what's the purpose of watercolour stretching? What's the point of stretching watercolour paper? So looking at it objectively, um, it's a technique used to prevent the paper from buckling or warping when you apply a wet wash to your paper. So when we stretch our watercolour paper, it causes the fibres in the paper, particularly so if it's a good quality cotton paper, the fibres expand, which can cause the, the um, the paper to warp or curl or make it difficult to apply watercolour um, as you as you apply it it will warp and buckle and a lot of artists don't like that so this is why we do this process or if you are that kind of artist so once the paper has been sitting on the board in the manner i've just explained for a few minutes you can wet your um you can wet your tape just by adding a, a little sponge there to it and then stick it to the board in the way that I'm showing you here. You want it to sort of overlap the paper by about an inch or so, so you want it sort of half on the board and half on the paper, making sure that when you apply your uh, adhesive tape that you iron out any creases that you see appearing on your paper 
um, as you work through. So the idea here is as you attach your sticky tape, as you attach your gummed tape to that board and the paper, if you do see any of those little air pockets or bubbles or warping appear, you want to just try and push them out gently with your hands if you can. So ideally you don't want to be um, doing what I'm doing here and wetting your gummed paper on your watercolour paper because it's going to maybe have some glue on your paper there. But because I'm um, sort of limited in space here with my camera in front of me, I'm just doing it here so that you can see what I'm doing. So at this point, I'm just wetting all the strips here using my sponge, as you can see, on the watercolour paper, which you don't want to do, <laughs> just stick it on the side there. Um, again, making sure that all the air pockets have gone. Now, once I've stuck this down, I'm going to let it dry completely. And depending on the temperature of your room and your climate and all that sort of thing, it depends on how long this will take. You want it to be absolutely dry. So I'm expecting this to warp and buckle as it's drying, which would be the natural way for it to do. It's perfectly normal and it's what I would expect to happen at this stage. So I'm just waiting for those little warps to appear and then we'll go on to the next step. So you can see I'm just patting up the excess water that was on the board there. The board was very, very wet. As I said, I wanted to make it as wet as possible for you to see. Ordinarily, you maybe wouldn't want it to do it that wet, but for the purposes of this demonstration, and so that you can see that I'm not cheating in any way, um, I made it as wet as possible. The paper is completely dry and now it's ready for the next step. We need to apply a wash on here to see whether or not it buckles and warps once we have stretched it. Okay. Now I'm a botanical artist and I don't need to stretch my paper because I work with small pictures like this and I work in finer detail with no larger washes. So these are the kind of work that I would ordinarily do. And by the way, these are all from our YouTube tutorial. So if these are something that you'd like to try for yourself, they're completely free and I will link them in the description box. So in order to make this a fair comparison, um, this is my, I think it's a three quarter inch flat brush here. It's the largest brush that I have within my kit. So it's the only one I can use here. I want to do a lovely loose watery wash to try and get that paper to buckle and warp. I want to get this paper to buckle and warp as much as I can. So I'm going to be doing a big wash on this paper or as large as I can do. So I'm just mixing some random colours here. I've got pink, I've got an orangey colour and a little bit of a kind of maroony. I've got a, a nice bright pink and an orange and we can see how we go with this. I've added plenty of water and I'm using my three quarter inch flat brush here to apply it onto the stretched paper. So of course at this point just to remind you that that paper is completely dry and I'm just applying my wash in the way that I would ordinarily do if maybe I was a landscape painter or if I were doing a big background wash for any of my paintings. This is how I would apply the paint. When you're applying a wash, what you're looking for is a nice flat wash. You want the color to be nice and even and you want the transition from the top part of the wash to the bottom to be nice and smooth and you can see here um, I'm going to add a little bit more water to that pigment because it's sticking a little bit. I wanted to add as much water again as possible to this so that I can show you how that watercolour paper is expected to warp and buckle at this point. Now I have to say at this point that I'm a little bit surprised that nothing's happened into the paper and I'm beginning to feel my shame. I can see that by adding more water, um, by spreading that paint around, I'm hoping that something will happen and that paper will start to buckle, which is what I would have expected it to do. But to my surprise, we're still waiting. Ooh, and nothing's happening here. So I decided in order to prove my point, somewhat unsuccessfully to spray the entire thing now that it's bone dry with some water. I liberally applied the water over this dried paint to try for all my might to make this paper buckle and bend and cockle. I was hoping that this would help it prove me wrong but I'm still waiting. So to remove the paper from the board, all you need to do once it's completely dry is go around the outside edge with either a Stanley knife or something like that and just score or cut the outside edge and then you should easily be able to lift it off the board like this. Um, I do find it a little bit difficult to, to sort of cut off without cutting the board itself. So if this is something that worries you, if you damage your watercolour board, 
It can damage the board, so just be careful with your knife. And of course, if you are going to be using this to paint uh, an actual painting, you need to have that margin where you've got that tape to consider. And it does actually stick to the board um, like this. You can see me trying to peel it off. So if that's something that you that troubles you, then you may want to try the other method um, of stretching your paper if you want to. But it does leave a sort of sticky residue like this, and it is extremely difficult to get off. So let's go back to me and we can talk about my finding. Findings. So what are my findings from this experiment? Well, as you can see, even with my futile attempt of spraying it with water in order to try to make this paper buckle, it wasn't having any of it. So was I right with my controversial claim? No, I was absolutely wrong. So if you want to go to the effort of stretching your watercolour paper, if you paint in a way that requires larger washes, or perhaps you just don't like your paper warping as you as you paint, which is understandable, then I absolutely recommend that you do it. I don't have time to do it. And as I said, for my kind of painting, it doesn't really matter. I don't need to do it. As I demonstrated in my earlier video where I was claiming that stretching watercolour paper was a waste of time, the point of that video was that when the paint dries, it still dries flat, so long as you keep it attached to the board. You have to ask yourself whether it matters to you that when you're applying the paint onto the paper and that paper warps at that point, whether you want to go to the effort of stretching it. It is worth the effort. It does dry, as you can see here, completely flat, as do the others. But when I was applying the paint, it really did sit nice and flat on the paper. So if you are painting larger washes, it's a really great way and it does make a massive difference. So I stand by it. I was completely wrong in my first claim and I do apologize for that. Thank you so much, by the way, for your feedback on that video. Um, I was quite surprised to, to see so many people felt so strongly about it. So I put my hands up and I was wrong with my claim. Um, if anybody's got any suggestions as to what I can paint on this uh, lovely little wash here that I've done, I would be grateful for your suggestions. So do let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to join any of the other tutorials that I mentioned earlier on in this video, then do join us. Um, I will put them in the description box underneath this video so that you can click through and have a look at the botanical paintings that we have on our channel. Once again, thank you for watching and if you have enjoyed this video, could I ask you please to hit that like button. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you've enjoyed what I've said and it pushes it out to more people. Also, if you want to join in with our weekly tutorials, you may want to hit that subscribe button below and hit the little bell notification on the side. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new episode. Once again, thank you for watching this video and I apologise once again for my false claim that stretching watercolour paper is a myth. You don't have to do it, but you can if you like that kind of look. Thank you for watching and until next time.